three, two, one. Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Musician on MMA. I'm your host, per usual, John from Medicine Hat. I have channels on YouTube as well as bitshoot.com. Um, now, I do have to explain just a little bit about this format of this episode. Um, I'm going to try this for uh, for this episode to do a voiceover uh, podcast, kind of like I started the series. Um, I'm going to uh, take this week to not do the video version. Um, I feel like it was distracting me a little bit. I feel like it wasn't as natural as I uh, as I was when I was doing just more of the uh, more of the radio DJ style or the uh, podcast style. So I think what I'll do if this goes well, I'm going to edit in the the usual pictures that I would if I was doing a video cast style and then kind of make it voiceover podcast within a uh, more of a slideshow Ken Burns um, style when it comes to the visuals. So, um, that being said, let's get down to it. We're talking tonight about UFC 238, and that is this Saturday, June 8th. The, uh, early prelims start at 615. The prelim card is at eight, and then the main card is at 10. And these are all Eastern times because I live in the Midwest, (laughs) um, so yeah, this looks like a fantastic card per usual when it comes to the pay-per-views. Um, we got some heavyweights, we got bantamweights fighting, we got lightweights fighting, um, and then we also have women flyweight uh, co-main, and then another bantamweight uh, matchup for the main event. So the uh, first match, whoa, hold on there, sorry about that, guys. The uh, first match of the uh, main card is going to be uh, heavyweights uh, Taito Ivasa and Blagoy Ivanov. So let's look at Blagoy real quick. Um, I know he had lost to Junior Dos Santos last summer, and then he did beat Ben Rothwell um, just a couple months ago in March at uh, Fight Night 146. Um, ben Rothwell... Uh, older veteran, his record was uh, 36 and 11. So um, I, I think that was a good win for Ivanov to get so he could uh, fight Tuivasa. Um, when it comes to Tuivasa, he's eight and one. He's definitely a newcomer, but he's proven he's a beast. He also fought Dos Santos um, recently, and that was back in, uh, actually not recently, man. His last fight was back in December. Yikes. So we haven't seen him in a, in a couple months. Um, he was resting up from the, uh, JDS fight and, uh, but yeah, he's a great, when it comes to heavyweight, he's, uh, he's somebody that I look for, um, to be a future champion. He is a brawler. He's a beast. Um, he's one of the only guys I can think of right now that are coming up a younger guy. And, uh, when it comes to heavyweight division. So I think he's going to be the front runner, um, very soon. In my opinion, if, if he gets on a good, if he gets in on, on a good undefeated streak, he can definitely take a run for heavyweight. Um, especially since we see guys like Stipe and DC, I think he would have uh, a little bit of trouble with, say, someone like Nganu, another bigger guy, kind of like JDS. But that would be a good matchup, too. If, if they if they wanted to make that, that would be a sick matchup, too, for, uh, for Ty. Um, I really think when it comes to this matchup, I like Tuivasa. I think he's going to be faster. I think they both have punching power that, that matches heavyweights, any heavyweight. But um, I think when it comes to Tuivasa, he's fresher of a fighter. I think when it comes to uh, Ivanov, I think, uh, I just don't think he has the, uh, I just don't think he has the stamina when it comes to Tuivasa. I think Tuivasa can get in and out a little quicker I think he has he has better stamina for this, and uh, I'm gonna take Tuivasa for this for sure. This fight, and um, let's look at the odds, the Vegas odds. Um, Vegas has it for Tuivasa minus one fifty nine to Ivanov's uh, plus one thirty one, so that's a very small uh, betting window. But I think uh, 
that's obviously not going to sway me either way because I obviously like Tuivasa for this fight, even though the numbers are quite small for both people. Um, so Tuivasa all the way for that fight. Um, and then next in the bantamweight division, we have uh, Jimmy Rivera and uh, Peter Jan. So Rivera's been pretty spotty, in my opinion, lately. Um, he lost to Sterling in his last fight in February. I know he lost to Morais, who's fighting in the main card. He's lost to Dodson. So he he definitely needs a win. He definitely needs to beat Peter here. And then Peter, 12-1 uh, and one record. Um, he beat Dodson. Um, so if you want to do MMA math, it looks like he could beat Rivera because Rivera lost to Dodson. So if you want to do that, uh, if you want to do that algebra, you know, you could, you could say that, uh, Peter's going to win this one. Um, so he's been fighting well, his last three, he's, he's had, uh, either a decision or a, uh, KO TKO. So I think it's going to be Peter. I think this could be a knockout. Rivera has trouble with his chin. We saw that with Marais last summer, um, uh, beating him. And gosh, it must have been, what was the round? First round, 33 seconds. It's just like, come on, you know? So, um, <laughs> so uh, not that I can get in the octagon with any, any size of these guys, but um, Rivera definitely doesn't have the chin um, when it comes to these guys. And I like Peter for this. I, I really do for this matchup. And uh, Vegas odds have uh, Peter at negative uh, 189 to Jimmy Rivera's plus 161. So Vegas likes Peter as well. Um, but we'll see. I mean, this is what I like about MMA. This is what I like about UFC. You never know who's going to show up. Say if a weight cut went hard for one of the guys, the other guy's going to have that advantage. Um, to the fight. So moving on to the next fight, this fight's going to be sick. So we have Tony Ferguson and Cowboy Cerrone, two ridiculous fighters. Um, if you follow MMA, you know, both these guys by heart. Uh, Tony Ferguson's a monster. Um, he, uh, he fought last October. He beat Pettis, Anthony Pettis, to be exact. And that was his last fight. That was in October. So Cerrone's been on a killing. If you guys have been watching MMA, UFC lately, he's been fighting a lot. This will be his third fight in just 2019 alone. And we're just in June. <laughs> so he could he could be starting to set some records when it comes to uh, how many fights a year a fighter's getting. And he's 36. So that puts these other guys that are 10 years younger than him to shame. Um, but yeah, he's been fighting, gosh, his past couple fights, they've been great. He's been on a tear. 2018, he hasn't lost in a long time. He hasn't lost since, since about a year ago. And he's had what? One, two, three. He's had three more fights since then. He's ready to go. Um, Ferguson. Ferguson definitely has a tricky style. I know with Cowboy, he has that Muay Thai down. He's a beast in Muay Thai and striking. Um, and he's just well-rounded. I think the only thing that that takes Cowboy down is just the weirdness of Ferguson. He has these goofy movements. He can throw an elbow from anywhere. He can do some kind of weird spinning thing. Um, and Cowboy, I wouldn't say he's traditional. I wouldn't say, oh yeah, he's a traditional MMA guy, but he comes in, he does his work and he wins. And that's why I'm going to take Cerrone on this one. I think he, I think that more traditional, um, strike him, Muay Thai him kind of stuff. I think that's going to take Ferguson down. I like Ferguson too. This is a hard fight for me to decide on, but I'm going to, I'm going to take Cowboy on this merely because he can come into the cage very positive and have everything down from his camp. I think the problem with Ferguson, he's had some distractions outside of the octagon. And if we know anything about that, whether it's Conor McGregor or John Jones, when these guys come into the octagon with some issues outside of the octagon, I think you're going to turn, you're going to have some issues. You might have some 
<clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you're going to have some, <clears throat> sorry, gosh, you're going to have some problems, uh, mentally to get the, uh, to get the, uh, to get the job done. Um, so I like cowboy on this, um, Vegas likes Ferguson at minus 293 and Cerrone at plus 237. So really not a massive number again. It looks like all except one of these fights are going to be really big on the numbers for betting. Um, but I like Cerrone. Um, I think he's been on a tear lately. His, it seems like his son having a, having a kid definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, definitely has made him, uh, more aware of, of things. And I, I think he wants to, he wants to keep that train rolling with the fights. And I think that helps Cerrone. He's in shape. He knows he's ready to go. I think with Ferguson taking a break, you know, that's going to be uh, interesting to see. <clears throat> a lot of people say there's no such thing as ring rust, but I, I just think mentally, even if your body's there, I think mentally they need to prepare for that. And Cerrone's been there uh, more frequent lately. All right, so next on the card is uh, women's. Let's get to the uh, list here. Okay, so women's flyweight, Valentina Shevchenko, she's a beast, and Jessica I, she's not bad either. <laughs> um, so let's look at Jessica I. Um, I think, ironically, I think she was the person that got kicked in the eye, and she had a... Someone's big toe. Is this the chick? Maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. There was someone that I swear she got kicked in the eye. And I thought it was ironic her name was I. <laughs> Maybe it was a different fighter. Or you know what? That might have been uh, Zingano. Cat Zingano. So maybe I'm thinking of someone else. Anyways, uh, Jessica I, her record's pretty good 16 and or excuse me 14 and 6 she fought three times last year this will be her first fight of 2019 um all three fights last year went to decision for her um so we'll see what happens uh with Shevchenko though she's a beast uh she definitely has her striking and Muay Thai down um her record 16 and 3 and she I believe has the um has the belt i'm pretty sure but yeah shevchenko is a monster uh she also has a sister in the ufc she's a monster um but yeah this will be a good fight i think also i think with jessica i she needs to stay outside she cannot get in with shevchenko that's going to be a problem i think that's always been a problem for uh for fighters that fight shevchenko I like Shevchenko on this. She's been looking awesome the past couple fights. And, uh, and yeah, let's look at Shevchenko's stuff. You know, she beat Ioana. Um, her, her past couple fights have been canceled, so that definitely stinks. Last year, she should have had one other, um, one other fight uh, before uh, Ioana's fight uh, against uh, Sajara Eubanks, but um, that didn't happen. And I, I think she would have beaten Eubanks as well. Eubanks, I think, uh, when it comes, she was on the Ultimate Fighter. Eubanks was. She's a big lady, but you know, with Shevchenko and her her Muay Thai experience and all that background, definitely helps. It definitely helps. And I think with this fight going into it, not only being the co-main and having a lot of pressure, Shevchenko likes the pressure. And gosh, she is her skills are insane for stand up. I think with anything. Jessica would have to use some sort of Muay Thai or uh, uh, wrestling grappling to uh, to win this. I, I really do. I don't. I do not think uh, Jessica can can uh, break the chin of Valentina at all. So I like Valentina. Let's look at the odds. Um, odds are <laughs> widely in favor of Shevchenko. So this would be a huge upset if uh, if uh, Jessica I won this. Shevchenko is at minus a thousand. And Jessica I is at plus 600. So when it comes to the main event, the main card, excuse me, this is the biggest uh, bet spread for sure. Um, other ones, like I've gone over before, in the hundreds, 200s, stuff like that. So there's always a fight or two on, on these main uh, main 
pay-per-views that end up being kind of squirrely. <laughs> so Shevchenko definitely has the advantage on the betting numbers too. And I like Shevchenko too. Her style fits very well for the, uh, for the flyweight division in the women's. All right. So we're at the main event now, Henry Cejudo versus Marlon Moraes. And, uh, this is a good one too. I, I really think with, uh, with Cejudo, obviously we know he's a really good wrestler. He was able to beat up TJ pretty quick. And um, I think with Cejudo, he needs to use his wrestling. He has great hands too. Um, as we saw with TJ, I wouldn't call the TJ win a fluke, but we all know with TJ having to cut all that weight, that definitely took a, uh, a toll on TJ's health uh, coming into the fight. And then with Marais, man, he's been looking so good the past couple fights. Like I said, with Rivera, he beat Rivera very quickly last summer. I think it was maybe in July or August of last summer, maybe even around the same time. Yeah, it was, it was June. Yeah, so it was roughly a year. Almost exactly a year that he beat um, that he beat Rivera. So he also beat uh, Rafael Sunsal not too long ago. That was back in February. And that was his last fight. That was a really great submission round one. So he has a, he's very well-rounded Morais. And that's the thing that I really think with Cejudo, this could go five or this could go, this could go one or two. Um, even though they're bantam weight, I really think either of them can knock each other out. I mean, you look at Cejudo, he knocked out TJ Morais. He's knocked out some people. He submitted people. So who's to say that this could only go a round or two, even though these are these are the guys in the smaller weight division. Um, so I really think uh, I honestly like Morais in this. Um, I don't know if Cejudo can can play on the outside and and wrestle Morais down and not afford uh, to get submitted or uh, or uh, TKO or knocked out. I like Morais. I think his hands are a little better, and I think. Uh, I think not having the belt right now is, is, is keeping him very, very hungry to get this done. Um, so I like Marais. Let's take a look at the, uh, the odds here. Um, Vegas likes Marais at uh negative one eighty five, and uh Cejudo at plus one forty eight. So very small numbers again in this fight. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, with, with this one, I think it's another close one, kind of like with Ferguson and uh, Cerrone both have great styles to, to match up with, but I think Marais is going to be hungrier. I know I say that a lot on these things on these uh, podcasts, just as a, as, as banter, but you know, I I think the drive to, to get that belt, it it keeps these guys rolling. And Marais has looked so good in his past couple of fights. I think he's ready to do this. I think he's there. So I like Marais on the main event. Uh, just looking at the card at the main, main, uh, main card here. I think this is going to be a really entertaining card. Um, and, uh, just to wrap things up, hope everybody's been having a good week. Hope everybody has a safe weekend. And as always stay cool. <laughs>